Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for our first webinar in our three-part series. These have been developed to raise awareness and develop understanding of the Health and Care Staffing Scotland Act 2019, which is new legislation that you will need to be considering from April this year, April 2024. My name is Joanne Duncan and I joined the Safe Staffing Programme last summer on a secondment from the inspection teams to support daycare of children's services to prepare for enactment. Also supporting our sector and on the call with us today is Candice Aitken, who joined the Care Inspector last year. Candice will be supporting the event by providing links in the chat to sites and resources we mentioned during the session. The Safe Staffing Programme was commissioned by the Scottish Government to support care services to prepare for the introduction of new legislation, the Health and Care Staffing Scotland Act 2019. This is the first legislation in the UK to set out requirements for staffing for both health and care services. The Act aims to enable high quality care and improved outcomes for people using services in both health and care by helping to ensure appropriate staffing. The Act places duties on health boards, care service providers, Healthcare Improvement Scotland, the Care Inspectorate and Scottish Ministers also have duties and this will affect legislation that guides the requirements of the services that you currently provide. There will be changes to current legislation used for regulatory purposes, those changes being the reduction of Regulation 15 from the Scottish Statutory Instruments, which you are currently regulated against at the moment, and we'll review this with you as part of the webinar series. Hopefully you will have noticed that this webinar is the first in a three-part series and we've done that to hopefully support more people to engage and participate. Today's session will provide a brief overview to introduce you to the Act as a whole, focusing on the parts of the Act applicable to our sector and I'll discuss as we go through today's session areas that we will take a deeper look into for the second and third webinars. We're hoping that spreading these sessions out will allow for some reflections in between so we can support with any queries or comments and we will be incorporating the Q&A session at the end of the third webinar. We know that the Foundation for Improving Children's Outcomes and Providing Quality Care is based on the quality of our staff teams. The training and values of the people who work in your settings really do underpin the quality of experiences and opportunities that children receive each and every day. The Health and Care Staffing Scotland Act has a focus on valuing and appreciating staff and we want to support and guide you through this legislation today and across our webinar series really highlight good practice already happening within the sector and celebrating the people working in the ELC around Scotland. We'll start with an overview of the Act as a whole. There are four parts to the Act which you can see on the screen. The first part affects the work of all services registered with the Care Inspectorate. These are the guiding principles which I'll cover this morning. The second part is only applicable to services in the NHS, so do not apply to services that you provide or that we regulate. The third part is applicable to care services again, and this is where we see the similarities with the current legislation of Regulation 15, which we'll cover today. Chapter 3A within Part 3 is only applicable to services using a staffing method framework, which at the moment are care home services for adults. There is a caveat in the legislation that Scottish ministers may introduce this in other sectors in the future. However, the Scottish Ministers have not requested we introduce this in the ELC sector at this time. Part 4 is a short part of the Act and identifies the ancillary provision, which really provides for the commencement of the Act. So this part of the Act does not hold any expectations from services. We can see here that although the legislation contains much more detail than the current legislation in relation to staffing, that of Regulation 15, there are only some parts of the Act applicable to the ELC sector, so our webinar series will focus on Part 1 and the first section of Part 3 of the Act. Before we move on to the parts of the Act that are applicable to ELC, 
We just wanted to show you the image for the staffing method framework that's mentioned under Chapter 3A of Part 3. Again, this is not applicable for us, but if you log on to our hub page or if you see any information online about the Act, you will likely see this image because this is quite a big change for the adult care home sector. So we felt it was better to show you the image to know that it doesn't apply to ELC at the moment. There are some really good elements in this framework that we find we're already using in ELC, but the use of this framework is not currently expected or mandated from April. So moving on to part one of the Act, and this part tells us about the guiding principles. These apply to all social care services. So the Act states, the main purposes of staffing for health and care services are to provide safe and high quality services and to ensure the best care outcomes for people who use services. The rest of the Act is all about making these main purposes happen. Services should be able to discuss how you've considered the guiding principles and use them when making decisions about staffing. Staff should also be supported to understand the main principles of the legislation, as this is what underpins their practice. So all services need to be aware of what the new legislation entails and consider how you will ensure that you meet the expectations of the Act. So when you're considering staffing in your service, the main purpose of staff should be to provide safe and high quality services and to ensure the best care outcomes for children. In order to achieve this, we need to consider eight principles of the Act. Those eight principles are on the slide now and feature in part 1b of the Act. These are referred to as the main principles and must be considered when arranging staffing in any service type in order to achieve the two guiding principles that were set out in the last slide. It's these main principles that we will be taking a closer look at next week for our second webinar, where we'll be using an interactive platform to ask you to identify areas of good practice already in the sector in relation to each principle. We'll go through them individually next week and relate them to current guidance documents already in use in the sector and we'll relate these to the health and social care standards and to codes of conduct specifically for the employer. Most of these headings are similar to expectations set out in Regulation 15 and I'm sure you will be able to identify areas of good practice within your own services in relation to these principles. With the introduction of the health and social care standards, we're already working in ELC towards the first principle of improving standards and outcomes for children. And now it's about identifying the impact of staffing on those processes. The second principle of taking account of individual needs is something many services do very well with their personal planning and staff's involvement with that. For principle three, respecting the dignity and rights of service users, for us, of course, children. I've seen some very good examples where services are carrying out great work in terms of supporting children's understanding of their rights and how staff are respecting the dignity of children. Principle four, taking account of the views of staff and service users, is something we're already looking for during inspection to determine how you are gathering the views of children and their families. This now goes a little further to ask how you're also gathering and considering the views of staff as well. Something that many services are already confidently carrying out and acting on, and they're already evidencing this by showing how the views of children and staff have influenced improvement or development plans, for example. One principle we wanted to draw your attention to is an addition to current legislation, that being the wellbeing of staff. Many of your services may already have measures in place to consider staff wellbeing and will be able to identify areas of good practice already in your service which would meet the requirements of the new legislation. Our national guidance documents, such as Realising the Ambition and national frameworks, including the Blueprint 2020, which documented the Scottish Government's vision for the expansion of ELC, all recognise that a high quality workforce is a key driver in providing high quality care. 
This legislation aims to promote increased wellbeing of staff working in the care sector, with the expectation that by supporting staff's wellbeing, we'll be reducing sickness absence, burnout and work-related stress, meaning that staff are available to care for children in your settings. In order to provide that safe and high quality service, appropriate measures and checks will need to be in place to achieve and maintain the wellbeing of individuals working in the service. What that will look like will differ between services and it's about finding processes and measures that meet the needs of individual services and staff. The focus is on staff wellbeing in so far as it affects the main purposes of the Act to provide safe and high quality services and ensuring the best care outcomes for children. The important thing services should be aiming for is that it's safe for staff to raise issues without fear of retribution and that there's a culture of service improvement of open communication and transparent processes. Like I said, next week we will take a closer look at each of these individually and we will be inviting you all to share ideas of good practice within your services to support you to become more familiar with the principles. This legislation is not seeking innovative or new models of staffing. Its aim is to support decision making and flexibility. Its purpose is also to promote transparency in staffing and support an open and honest culture where staff are engaged in processes that affect staffing levels and that they're kept informed about the decisions to those levels and needs. That was a brief introduction of part one of the Act and the conversations we will be facilitating next week. And before we move on to introduce part three, I wanted to discuss the statutory guidance that accompanies the Act. This has been developed by the Scottish Ministers to provide practical information and support organisations in meeting the requirements that are placed on them by the Act. The statutory guidance can be found online, however it's still in draft form as the Scottish Government had this open for consultation last year and the review of that consultation has just been released. The document itself provides clarification on some terminology used within the Act and it also provides further descriptors of the principles and details information about research that's been undertaken, which shows the link between the safety of people experiencing care and the well-being of staff delivering services. The statutory guidance has been written for the whole of the health and social care sector, so it's not prescriptive specifically for our sector. But we have developed our hub page specifically for the ELC sector and there are sections within the hub page for each specialism within ELC, which includes daycare of children services. So to support the use of the statutory guidance document for the Act, we have linked sections from the statutory guidance to each of the eight main principles on the last slide. So please do view the hub page for further support on the application of the new legislation as we approach the enactment date of April this year. Now, this is the current legislation that covers staffing. This is Regulation 15 from the Scottish Statutory Instruments, which, as you'll all know, is secondary legislation from the Public Services Reform Scotland Act. It is a small paragraph in the instruments which details how providers must have regard to the size and nature of the care service when arranging staffing and ensuring that there are at all times suitably qualified people working in the service. Now, the asks of the current regulation are all still present in the new Act. The new Act just goes into more detail as there's a focus on the recognition that, as we all know and appreciate, high quality staff provide high quality services. The current expectation is when the Health and Care Staffing Scotland Act comes into place in April 2024, this regulation from the current instruments will be revoked. So we'll move on to having an overview of part three of the Act. Part three starts at section seven within the legislation, which is the duty on care service providers to ensure appropriate staffing. This means providers must ensure there are suitably qualified and competent staff working in the service in numbers that are appropriate for the health and wellbeing of children, 
and to ensure the provision of safe and high quality care. The new legislation does not impose different staffing levels and the minimum ratios given to services at the point of registration or variation will remain the same. These ratios are a minimum standard and services still need to consider how you arrange your staffing whilst fully considering children's individual needs. It's Section 7 of the Act that details how you should determine what constitutes appropriate staffing levels by considering the nature of the care service, the kind of service provided, the size of the care service, the aims and objectives you're working towards, the number of people experiencing care and the needs of those people. We will be taking a closer look into this section of Part 3 of the Act during our third webinar on the 31st of January. Still within Part 3 of the Act, Section 8 is about staff training. The Act states that providers must ensure staff working in the service receive appropriate training for work they are being asked to undertake and receive suitable assistance for the purpose of obtaining further qualifications appropriate to their work. Now, the important element here is qualification important to their work. This is already in legislation that we're working with at the moment and refers to ensuring staff receive appropriate training in order to achieve the guiding principles of the Act, which are being able to provide safe and high quality care and ensuring the best outcomes for children. We will also be covering this section during our third webinar, um, but there are some questions on the screen that you may ask yourself to identify if you're meeting the requirements of this section of the Act, such as how are you identifying training needs? Are staff enabled to reflect on and share their learning with their colleagues? And are there opportunities for professional discussions that can inform practice and ultimately influence continuous improvement. This slide brings both of those sections of the Act together, Section 7 and Section 8, and demonstrates the similarities between the current Regulation 15 and the new legislation. So we've got wording from the current legislation of Regulation 15 on the left-hand side of the table and wording from the new Act on the right-hand side. The duty on care services to ensure appropriate staffing by considering the nature and size of the service already feature in current legislation, as do the considerations of your aims and objectives and the number and needs of children. The requirement to ensure there are suitably qualified staff who receive appropriate training can also be seen in Regulation 15. So the information we discussed for Section 8 about staff training is already being considered with the current legislation. To fulfil current requirements, we already ask providers during inspection about induction plans and checking the regularity of scheduled supervisions or appraisal systems that you have in place, which allows providers and managers to assess, to monitor and then to plan the appropriate training needs for individual staff. So this demonstrates the ask in the new Act about staff receiving appropriate training for the work they are to perform and being assisted to ensure their professional learning is current is not a new ask. The similarities between the current legislation of Regulation 15 and Part 3 of the new Act are evident. The wording is a little bit different, but in general the ask of Part 3 of the new legislation does not differ much from Regulation 15, with the exception of the well-being of staff. This is detailed in Section 7, and it's the well-being of staff, again, to meet the guiding principles in so far as it affects the health and well-being of children and the provision of safe and high quality care. That brings us to the end of our introduction of the Act, and I hope you will join us over the next two sessions to take a closer look at each section that we've introduced today. I want to move on to identify other supports that are available to continue to raise your awareness and confidence of being ready for enactment. I mentioned earlier that we've developed our hub page, which is on the screen now. You'll also see on the left hand side of the screen, which is on the hub, our poster that's been developed 
to support staff and services to understand the main principles behind the Act and what this means for them in practice. The poster is available to download on our Hub page and Candice is going to put a link in the chat for this for reference as well. This screen again is our Hub page. I've just scrolled down a little to show you the different specialisms. So you can click to open it up um, either the Daycare of Children tab or the Childminding tab and this is where you will find two short bite-sized videos to support staff to become familiar with the parts of the Act that applies to them. We've also linked the chapters from the statutory guidance that I mentioned earlier to each of the eight main principles here. It's under these tabs where the recording of this webinar series will also be kept. So please do view our hub page to support you and your staff to continue building on your knowledge of the upcoming enactment of the legislation. If you prefer in-person discussions and support, we are holding national events starting in Glasgow on the 1st of February. We will be there all day at each event. However, the times on the screen for each area will be dedicated to support services in the ELC and children and young people sectors. If you would like to come along in person and continue to build on your knowledge and understanding of the new legislation, then please do register for each event that you'd like to attend as we do have a different limit for each venue. The last support document I wanted to highlight for now is the Knowledge and Skills Framework, which has been developed by the Healthcare Staffing Programme within Healthcare Improvement Scotland and NHS Education Scotland. The aim of this framework is to support all staff within the health and care sector to provide a consistent and inclusive approach to learning and development, to really support individual staff and organisations in their understanding of workload and workforce planning and the application of this legislation. The framework is broken down into four domains or learning zones and within each domain there are four skill levels. The modules for the first two levels are called Informed and Skilled are currently available on the TURAS site which is the NHS Education for Scotland's learning and development platform. Now although this is predominantly an NHS resource the TURAS platform can be accessed by anybody from the social care sector, you will be able to set up a free account. The enhanced and expert levels are still being developed. Now, the team working on the framework within Healthcare Improvement Scotland held workshops throughout November to invite feedback and comment to support the review of the document. And I'm very pleased to report that these workshops were very well attended by people from the social care sector so the resource is being further developed to ensure that it offers a good learning experience for both health and care sectors. The resource will feature in the Future Proofing programme that is currently underway by the SSSC to support all practitioners and managers to understand both their responsibilities and rights imposed by the Act. So please look out for the revised framework that should be available soon. Thank you all very much for your time today to attend our first session. Next week, we will be using an online platform called AHA to allow for you to share areas of good practice related to each of the eight main principles. And we're really looking forward to hearing from you all about the positive work underway in the sector. Unpicking each of the eight main principles from part one of the Act will allow everyone to become more familiar with what they cover and recognise the impact of staffing for each area. If you haven't signed up for this session yet, um, please log on online and sign up for the second, third session. The QR code on the screen will take you to a Microsoft form which invites you to submit any questions or queries to us. With such high numbers registered for each event, we didn't feel we would have time to open up for a full Q&A session at the end of each, so we will be reviewing all questions or queries that are submitted through this forum. We'll then be able to group them into themes and provide responses and support the queries at the end of webinar three, where we have allowed time for a 30 minute Q&A session. You will be more than welcome to come off mic at that point and ask a specific question during the Q&A session as well if you would prefer to do so. 
Thank you very much for your time to join us today. I hope it's been helpful. The recording will be available on our Hub page as soon as we can, and we look forward to engaging in more in a more interactive session with you all next week. Thanks very much. Have a great day.